Hello and welcome to Cicerone Live. Uh, I'm Joe Williams and thanks really very much for joining me and all of us here uh, for our live book launch this evening. So we're here to talk about this brand new book uh, right here, Joss Naylor's Lakes, Mears and Waters, which is a, a new Cicerone publication that was written by uh, a wonderful author, uh, Vivian Crow, and, uh, and stars uh, this man right here, Joss Naylor. So the Lakes, Mears and Waters is a route in the Lake District. It's 105 miles long that takes in every major body of water uh, in the English Lake District. And Joss ran it in 1983. And uh, I seem to remember you telling me they were sort of one of the best runs that you'd ever had. I think it was one of the most spectacular ones yeah. uh, as far as beauty and uh, the array of different lakes and layers and uh, the waters. Absolutely. It was absolute magic, you know. Right. The thing itself is a picture in every valley and a different picture. And it is something very, very worth doing. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what we've tried to capture uh, in, this, uh, in this new book. So the book tells the story of, um, of the 1983 run um, that Joss did, but it also tells the story of Joss rewalking it with Vivian, uh, the author, uh, last year through the depths of COVID. Um, but it explains how you might want to do it um, if you're walking it or running the route, um, but also provides lots of sort of information about the Lake District and about Joss and about his life and um, and the really special areas that the route passes through. So three kind of thanks that we need to say right now. One is to Vivian Crow, the, the amazing author that put the whole project together and connected Joss uh, and Cicerone. Uh, next, Stephen Wilson. Uh, every one of the photos in the book um, from the um, from this um, walk last year comes from Stephen and they're absolutely gorgeous photos uh, and then finally Peter Todd Hunter. Um, Peter is responsible for um, the energy behind creating this project uh, so thanks so much for Peter making all of that work. So about about Joss um, it's, it's very hard to give an, an introduction to Joss but I'll, I'll have a go and try not to embarrass you uh, too much with it. I think it's fair to say that in the in the 70s and 80s, uh, particularly, Joss was one of the most dominant um, of, uh, of fell runners. I think um, at that time, particularly, fell running was probably what trail running and ultra running is uh, is today. Such a, a big deal um, um, in the running community. Um, many of his um, fastest times on long distance routes stood for um, well over a decade. Uh, a good example would be the Ennerdale um, Horseshoe Fell Race uh, up here in the Lake District, um, and that record, uh, that uh, that race, Joss won uh, nine years on the trot. Oh, nine years on the yeah. trot. Yeah, oh, you've got to have a lot of luck. Win a race <laughs> nine years in the trot. Good. Well, we'll come to you for for advice on it. Um, yeah. So uh, so we've got um, uh, a, an amazing amount of history there for Joss. Um, before I start asking Joss some, some questions, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to um, uh, the Braithe Trust, uh, whose um, who's centre that we're in um, tonight. Uh, the Braithe Trust are an amazing charity, so go and have a, have a look at them. And we'll be talking a bit more about Braithe uh, a little bit later. But I'm also joined by Mari. Mari, thanks for, thanks for coming. Uh, Mari's a Kendall-based uh, mother, veterinary surgeon, poet, fell runner, swimmer, climber, and general outdoor enthusiast from what I can make out. Um, Mara, we'll get into more of your details uh, uh, in a bit, but you've done some of the, the great challenges uh, in the Lake District and, uh, and further afield. Um, great, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to Joss for a little bit, um, and then Mari's gonna give us a, a slideshow. Um, and we're going to have some questions for Mari as well. Uh, and then we're going to go through some uh, audience questions. So if you guys can give us um, uh, give us some questions, that would be wonderful. So how to send us questions. Um, you can write in the comments on Facebook or on YouTube, or you can email them to us. That's at live 
at cicerone.co.uk. So now these uh, these amazing books. To purchase Lakes, Mears and Waters, please visit the Cicerone website um, or your local book or outdoor shop. They're, they're pretty well stocked uh, at the moment, uh, particularly in the, in the outdoor shops uh, in the Lake District. So do, do pop into some of those stores. Um, also, you can make your way onto the Cicerone website where you're going to find over a thousand articles about walking, trekking, running, cycling, as well as samples of all of our guidebooks, information about previous and upcoming events, uh, and you'll find our podcast on there as well. So there's a, a lot to explore there. Right. Okay. Well, welcome, guys. Um, Josh, I've got a I've got a pile of questions for you, but maybe let's just kick off with the most important one um, about this route. What is the Lakes Mears and Waters route? Well, it starts at uh, a place called uh, Mouswater, and it finishes at Overthwaite. Yeah. Which is you know up in the lake, the north end of the Lake District, and. From there, we, we kick off, we deliver to the lakes, and then we go over to Henderdale, then over to Wasdale, then from Wasdale, then we head down to Deverwater, and from there, we deliver back to Goatswater, Low Water, Leaver Water, Connison Water, and then the one that's way out on its own is uh, down through. Uh, it's down near. Um... Um, uh, Hawkshead or something. It's I guess just it's below Hawkshead. So it's, that's it's, not even halfway at that point. It isn't halfway at that point. Blimey. I, and then we come back up to uh, Grisdale and over to uh, Grasmere. Grasmere, okay. Then down to Windermere. Then from there down to uh, over the top, over the top to Skaggles Water. Then we went up into. Uh, Kent Mayor, from Kent Mayor, of the small water, blue water, and then to old water. Are we nearly there yet? Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> we just uh, nip over to Brothers Water, Holds Water, Bell Mayor, Dirt Water, and Passant Wade, and then up to Holthwaite. Now, Holthwaite's the one way of a lovely finish up about four or five miles of road. Road at the end of it. At the end of it, Ouch. there's all that. Climbing. There's nearly a thousand feet of climbing on that little back road. So that's that's an enormous amount of distance. I mean, it's a uh, hundred and five miles. Is, that's is that uh, hundred and five miles the way I went. I because uh, I did a bit of extra in the uh, back of team were just there. I was standing the lake for about ten minutes and they didn't turn up, so I took to the road so they could catch up to where okay. I was going. So I went round by Lowood and okay. back over into Charnock Windermere. Okay, okay. Dexter Road there. The, Josh, what, what made you want to do the Lakes, Mears and Waters route? I mean, there's, there are quite a few long distance challenges in the Lake District. I mean, the obvious ones, like the, the Bob Graham round, but what, what drew, drew you to it? And, and also what makes, it, what makes it a special route? Well, I think it's just the more or less the sheer beauty of the Lake District and the challenge it lays out, you know. Uh, but I looked at it and I thought, well, I'll do that someday in my lifetime. And anyways, the opportunity came up. I had a free weekend, so I had a couple of days where I did my training for it. And I got them two days, I put it more or less all together, yeah. apart from a little run from uh, Outerdale Farm, which I found then, to uh, Buttermere. Okay. And that night, I had one of the most beautiful runs in my life. It was one of those days when the cloud in the sky and this, the time I set up was about half past four and in an hour and 40 minutes I had gone up over the tops into Annadale over Buttermere Lake Pike and down to Buttermere Lake wow. and it took an hour and 40 minutes Gosh. and I, you know, this, I just couldn't believe it I thought my watch was telling lies yeah. <laughs> and there's still Icarus come and uh, I asked them the time and we uh, Clock wasn't tell lies after all. And I thought, well, I would be in good settle for the following. Yeah, it sounds like you were in very good following, shape. Following few days like that. And, and on that day, it was just absolute magic. You know, I just ran all day and from the start to the finish and never really had a bad patch. And uh, my legs never, you know, went really tired or stiffened up or anything. 
and my climb was good. Even on the roads, I was on the way, relaxed. And I've seen the most beautiful sights in my life. It's something you sort of look back at it. It's more like a dream than actually a reality. You know, to just think that you could just sit off in the morning and carry on running a nice pace all day without suffering at all. And uh, that's why the Lakes Mayor's Awards is something very special in my life. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I see. How I mean, how does it differ? I, I've done the Bob Graham round personally, but how does it how does it differ from a, from a route like that? I, and and why would people be? Why should people go and have a go at the Lake Smears and Waters? Well, it's for the sheer beauty of it, because you drop into the Valley's Mall, right? And nice. you know, you, you can there's two or three variations you can take to most of these points yeah. where the Bob Graham is a track now, which like you know a worn path where everybody goes. Absolutely. And this one, you know, you can vary your own routes, really, as long as you go to lower lakes, may have water points. Yeah. You know, you've got to do that bit. And uh, you maybe take a short career and but uh, the point you maybe add a mile or two on. So it's the kind of the variety of the landscapes and getting to see more of the Lake District, uh, I suppose, rather than the Bob Graham when you're just on top of the hill. That's right. Oh, and right. the Bob Graham, you have Got your head down more climbing and yeah. concentrating on your feet coming fast downhill. In this situation of doing lakes, mountain waters, it gives you a chance to uh, stride out at different places. And you know, when you're going over the skyline, you can look away forward, you can see where you're going. Okay, you can and enjoy you can, it. A bit you can <laughs> enjoy the scenery as you go along and, and take a lot in. It's just something very, very special. Brilliant, brilliant. I just want to sort of take us back and just um, uh, back to your childhood, uh, really, Josh. Where are you from? Well, I, I was born at Middle Row up in the head of Wastel Valley, next door to the Wastwater Hotel. Okay. I, not that I'm an alcoholic or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, that's where I was brought up, like, you know. And in them days, you know, sort of wartime and that, there was very, very few people about. Okay. You know, anybody you see knocking about. They were either old rock climbers or, you know, these older lads who had likes of the Abraham brothers there used to follow Wastel a bit. They were big friends of G.R. Whiting's at the Wastwater Hotel, especially Ashley. And, you know, Billy knew all him. It was the chapel road, let's have a crack in the white of news for about 30 years. Yeah. And, you know, there were a little group of people you would see and there was very few visitors about. There was one or two people who worked on drinking out at my ignition factory, who, you know, did a bit of climbing and that sort of thing. Right, okay, okay. So um, am I right in thinking, Joss, that you didn't have electricity at home until the 1970s? Uh, Is that, that true? Yeah, it was. It was about 72 or 3 somewhere in about there when we got electricity. We are just an old... <laughs> that just is amazing. ...old generators. And before that, we had all tiller lights. Before that, we had candles. Okay. I, <laughs> uh, you know, it was just one of them phases you went through. Yeah. But I can remember getting colour gas put in. The chap I put it in was a fellow called Arthur Alger, and he worked at the uh, drink ammunition factory. And uh, he, he was a plumber, I think, in his working life, like. Uh, and he was a top rock climber, things like that. It was really, you know, Oh, the opposite of fellow was Arthur. He used to wow. make, make canoes and tap, you know, put a couple of wheels on them, pull the frame, <laughs> pull them up the wash lead on his, like his bike. For real character in his own right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Just, do you uh, do you remember your first fell run? Uh, yeah, Is that the, something you can? The first fell run I actually did was a, a mountain trial. A mountain trial? Aye. Uh, isn't that a very long race? Aye, uh, they're fairly long. Because, you know, like, don't, don't people normally start running by and they're trying to run a mile and then needing to stop to walk? Aye, and... uh, they're the jobs who take these jobs seriously. <laughs> but that day, Will Sparrow, uh, on, on the Westford Hotel, had a Griffin who put the mountain trial on. He uh, stayed there, like, and he said to Will, do you think there's anybody in the valley who would like to have a run? Well, Will thought I might have like to have a run and he came around and I was having my breakfast and he said, you fancy doing a mountain trial? <laughs> and he told us what it was and I got no running short, I got out. Uh, Will said it would be all right. 
Well, I cut legs off my breeches and running, and, me, running me big work boots. And how did it go? It was going well with black sail boots, and then I got it was coming out of this forest. I got a leg over the forest way, and I got cramp in my legs. Oh, and it, it was just so hammering and sweating, and you know, and not running like. And did you enjoy it? It was bloody punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably what most people say about it. Uh, you yeah. know, I got cramped. Then I got cramped, but you know, all right. Was, at that point, I was, you know, in the lead, like, you know, I sat there about 10 minutes before anybody came. And then after a few runners I'd gone through, I got up and waddled away around again. I got up onto uh, Western and Kane, where there was a checkpoint after Black Sail Woods. And uh, I got catched up with a chap called, I think it was Joanne, and he. So I stopped with us, I got to the bridge at uh, bottom of uh, Sayed Town. And there's two old ladies on a uh, picnic and they're a salt cellar. And I said, can I have a bit of your salt? <laughs> and she said, I so I ah. don't put half a salt like a in my hand and just put it in my mouth and really? a drink of water. And as soon as I got rid of it, kind of thing, oh. I joined in and I, I paddled up on the top of Great End and then on the top of Ling Mallon. Finish back at the worst world hotel. I finished about half up the field, like you know. But so you were pretty good to begin with. Aye. Uh, or did it take did it take years for you to to be running consistently before you were not really because well, were you I a bit of a natural. It, well, I don't know about a natural, but they had a mountain trail from same place the following year. It was a different course, and I'd done a little bit of training and. I think I'd got myself a pair of old football boots, you know, they're a bit short, but I could cut toes out, let me big toes do. And uh, I could run in them, like, and I'd done a lot of, bit of training. And uh, I actually won it be 25 minutes, but I got disqualified because I'd missed a checkpoint. Okay. I couldn't find a checkpoint on Say Talon, which was on my doorstep, and I, I got a lot of stick about that. That's like your local hill. It is. Yeah. Uh, so, I got a lot of stick about that. But early, it, that was early days for you, though. It was, yeah. uh, but yeah. you know, next time I think I turned out, I was, I think I maybe wounded next time I ran. And then after that, I missed all years, and then I won seven in a row. And uh, then after that, I was the age when I was in a lot. I was fairly lucky, I know, because I won the vets nine times, you know. For, oh, okay. Uh, you know, which was just, you know, at that age, it was just like winning it, really. Uh, yeah. Joss, when you were, um, you've had sort of two stages of working life, firstly as a, as a farmer in Wasdale, and secondly, um, training apprentices at what then became Sellafield. Aye. Um, what was it like to combining working, farming, and then still trying to train and uh, and race in the mountains. Uh, but, you know, How could you do those things side by side? I never did, never ever did a lot of training. When I went out for a run, it was a long run, you know, my training runs. And, uh, so you didn't go out for sort of a, a quick 5k on no, the road or something like unless that? Unless, you know, unless it, sometimes I went out and worked for a half an hour at a quick five miles or something yeah. like that. I, you just sharpen the legs up a bit. But you know, when I had a time to go for rooms, I was a wet day and I couldn't get on with my work at all. Right. But uh, I didn't waste, waste any, you know, good ideas out like that. I had my work to do and the time it had to be done, it got done, whether it was raining or snowing or whatever. Or know, whatever the weather. And get, out, get, get, out, done, get out and get it done. Okay. You know, some days I'd work for, you know, 22 hours or something, I got it was on night shifts. And I just got up and you kept marching and did the job you had to do. Okay, okay. Well, I think we could probably learn some grit, uh, grit there. Thinking about the uh, the Lake Lakes Mears and Waters route, Josh. So you ran it in 1983, and then um, you guys started having the idea that um, writing a book about it uh, and uh, and introducing other parts of your life in the Lake District would be a a nice kind of project. So, what was it like rewalking those various sections of the route last year? It was absolute magic, really, because, you know, with the COVID carry on, we had to improvise the transport and that sort of thing. And I, we've got our transport manager with us tonight, Mr. Todd Hunter. Oh, yeah. Yes, he's a, a rather uh, 
He's done a good job helping us He's out. He's done a good that, job. Yeah. We're giving his Joe like him. We've sort of got him knocked around with Lee. He was fully human being now, like me. He took a bit of square number to start. <laughs> but, you know, it was one of those beautiful things to do, like us. Viv and Steve Wilson and Tony and Dave Elliott, you know, Dave's a good bloke. Like, you know, I had a good relationship with Dave at work, you know, but a couple of years I worked with him. And uh, we had some great memories, you know, when you're looking back, it'd be about 38 years now. Yeah. It was something very, very special. And they were very special days, too, you know, because every time you went out, you know, you had a good discussion about the valley and what went on in the valley. And Viv was a man of information. She was a lovely woman. You know, and, you know, we're very honoured to have uh, people like that working with you to put a book like that together because it's something I hope and I fear that it will so far, like, you know, and a lot of people have got a lot of pleasure and enjoyment out of reading it and just looking at those photographs of the most beautiful part of the world. Yeah, yeah. So you, of course, ran it in 1983 and then you walked, and you walked it uh, last year. Is it a good route to do as a as a walker? It you? is, I uh, because you know you can come and do bits, yeah, and you know, and then come back another day and do another bit. Yeah. Being somebody else also stop the pub, you know, whatever you want to do. Yes, there's a lot of good pubs along the way. Aren't there is. Uh, I can find a turn in anywhere. Yeah, you know, Holly Bottoms Lane. Uh, it is, you know, it's a thing you can do and do it socially and really enjoy it, like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Wonderful. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to try not to go for too long because probably we could be talking for many hours. But uh, I'd like to sort of ask you a few uh, a few kind of quick fire questions uh, that might not be entirely uh, normal. But um, uh, what's your favourite book? My favourite book. One I got a tremendous lot of pleasure to read was the. Uh, Autobiography of uh, the Chapo Trans Hour Rugby Union Men. Ah, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, that's Trump Yeah, we're going to have to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it was very well written. You okay. Know, you could read a chapter and go away and think about it and get something out of it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been a top rugby player yourself. Uh, and then he, 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 he was in charge of the uh, Japanese team and they scuttled the South Africans. You know, he found a way to beat them. And, it, you know, it was just that she is fame determination. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I guess we're all kicking ourselves because we can't remember the, the coach's name. They're called they're Jones. Knowing. It was Jones, but I can't. Yeah, remember. Eddie Jones. Then, Eddie yeah. Jones. Oh, and we, we, it's it's just there, like we beat them at the finish. Yeah. Um, Favourite film? Ah, oh, no, then the favourite film. Aye. I'm not, not much into films, really. No, I don't suppose you've got time for that. No, I never really watched a lot of films. But uh, I, I, The Dam Busters. Dam Busters, I, that's a good one. I, you know, the work and the, 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 the uh, lives that were lost, yeah. you know, getting that into, into, into the intuition was something Wonderful. And Jam, James Band Wallace, or whatever they call him, he had a tremendous theory and to put it into practice was something very, very special. Yeah. I am a lot out of that film. No, that's a good that's a good choice for a it top is. film. Yeah. I have yeah, a lot of fun in it. <laughs> yeah. Um favourite mountain. Ah, uh, my favourite mountain. It it is you Yubara. Yeah, okay. Know, it uh, was one you had to work going up from the front. Yeah. And whenever you looked at it, you, you saw it from a different angle, it was a different path. It's always a, a pretty pretty heavy duty hill to go up. Ah, it always is. got a steep climb. Ah, I, I was a good one to test your lungs. The first one I went up, I you know, was four year old round up there, and I thought I was never going to get to the top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think for people that are on their on their Bob Graham rounds as well, it does ah, tend to I've got to get into bottom gear to get up there. That's right. Um, right, um, let's think, what's the next uh, next quick fire question? Favourite thing to eat? My ah, favourite thing to eat, I like me uh, muesli in the morning. Muesli? Uh, muesli, aye. 
I put a bit of water on a bit of night, and, <laughs> and then could be good only in the morning to get that down there, get my show there. Very good, uh, very good. That's a, a, a good stamp choice. Um, favorite breed of sheep? I, I like a good blue gray head. Blue gray head, right? Aye, you know, a real medley type with good white legs and a white head, and I like to sell them up and fell tops. Aye, it gives say a good, good right good head. I can always remember on top of the hill head. And it must have been, I would say, 40 years ago, sun in there, and the sun was just shining there, and it'd be about maybe 8 o'clock at night. And there's this, it'd be one that under the lamb, it was a real thick, low grey with yellow. And I thought it was one of the most beautiful shape I've ever seen in my life. Very nice. I, and I've seen what a good Eric since, but that one was just at the right spot at the right time in the right light. They do often stand in sort of fairly epic locations. Don't they? Just, they, they, they know to be how to be photogenic. It was very photogenic within the camera. Yeah. yeah. Um, favorite running shoes? I at the moment I've got a pair. Oh, well, there's a New Balance, but I use Scots now, and uh, for no round shoe, they just do a good job, you know. Good stuff. And I've tried every shoe that's come out more or less. But uh, in my mind now, it might be the time I'll have a man. They could show it. Good stuff. I was wondering whether you were going to, I don't know, recall uh, the first version of the Walshes or something like ah, that. Ah, well, um, the first one that came out was, can't just think of the name now, but they were an orientation show out of, I think it was Norway, but they're the same sort of soles on, yeah. but the top wasn't strong enough. You know, I'd run them on cobbles and I no protection. Ah. And I uh, can't just remember now. There was somebody cross, I called them. But, uh, Great. Well, we like the Scots now. Ah, I was going for Scots. Very, very, very good. Great. So um, thanks, Josh. We'll, um, I'm sure we'll have some uh, plenty of audience questions for you uh, coming later. But right now, I think we can move over for uh, Mari. Um, Mari, I only gave you a very brief introduction earlier, so I do apologise for that. But you uh, completed the Lakes Mirrors of Waters route recently. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say about that. Um, and I think we can load up a, uh, a presentation in a, in a few moments. But just tell us to, to begin with, how did you learn about the lakes, mirrors and waters and what, uh, why did you want to, to start doing that? Yeah, um, well I had heard of the route before and I did have a little bit of interest. Um, but it is a lovely story um, of how I ended up meeting Joss. I mean I just want to say I'm so privileged and <laughs> honoured to be here tonight. The book is absolutely amazing. It appeals to the poet in me because it is it's beautifully written, mm. that kind of mixture of history with the with the root. Um, so I think Pete had found Pete Todd Hunter, uh, Joss's friend, had found some of my poetry online. And I think Joss and Pete are absolutely amazing at um, promoting and looking out for sort of local Cumbrian businesses and artists. And it's a really lovely thing. Um, and obviously everybody knows what an amazing man Joss is, but the generosity in his heart and kind of for supporting sort of local Cumbrian people is, it's amazing really. So we, we just met up for the crack, um, isn't that right? We had a crack <laughs> and a nice walk from, from Grasmere um, with Joss beasting, beasting us up the hill. And um, uh, Pete does have quite a few ideas, doesn't he? We got chatting. And uh, by the end of the day, uh, we were meant to be building a house, well, building, sort of redoing the bottom layer of the house. By the end of the day, that was postponed and still is currently. And I was uh, doing the Lakes, Mirrors and Waters um, in about 12 weeks at a time. And uh, we were uh, making a, a poetic running film about it. Um, so it was, yeah, it happened quite quickly. An explosion of ideas when Pete and I met, I think. So, <laughs> so what, what was it that were, like sort of captured your imagination about the route because we tend to sort of you know you tend to hear about these kind of things yeah. and then some things stick and some things kind of go away whether that's like a run or a or a trek or something like yeah. that um was it was it, i guess was it the link with joss that was sort of a meaningful thing there i think definitely was there's a yeah. photo of my slideshow but I, I love um uh, which we'll see in a minute um that shows that but it's a very beautiful route and we live in the Lake District and you know the Lakes, Mirrors and Water is what it's all about and the route basically does go round. It's, it's an inspiring route, it goes round 
kind of what makes the Lake District. The Lake District, you do see all the mountains, but as Josh said, is you go to places. I did, you know, parts of that route that I've never done before. I'd never been on for, and I've lived here 20 years. Yeah. So it, it is it is just an absolutely beautiful route. I mean, I've been around Bob Graham and done a number of other sort of local challenges. Um, I would agree with Josh. It absolutely stunning route, absolutely beautiful. I was lucky that we had we had more better than good weather on the day. Um, <laughs> it was very hot, but um, yeah, it's just it's a very special route. Okay, okay. Uh, just tell us a little bit more about yourself, Mari. Because uh, I mean, are you are you an elite runner? Um, yes. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. I sort of. It's really nice to be able to talk to you about this route, coming at it as a sort of more normal person, um, sort of sitting next to someone like Joss. Um, I mean, bas basically, I took more than twice the length of time that Joss did to do the route. I did it in thirty nine hours in the end. Um, you were enjoying it. I was enjoying more. I was just taking my time to enjoy yeah. more. Um, so yeah, being a mum makes it sort of. My children are quite young, five and seven. Um, makes it quite hard to fit everything in. Um, but I was so inspired by this route that it inspired me to, I just, yeah, I just really wanted to do it. Um, so I have carried quite a few injuries. I was told when I had my children, I was actually, I was injured quite badly. I was told I'd never okay. run again. So um, I, yes, I have wobbly bits. <laughs> um, and I think that, you know, often people will not go out and do things because if they have injuries or they don't feel yeah. they're in elite shape. Yeah. And, um, I guess I'm quite happy to fail, so I'm quite happy to have a go at things. Um, I've coined the phrase, my eyes are bigger than my thighs. Oh, and yeah. I, <laughs> that's, that's a really good one. Um, yeah. But I think the great thing about this route, um, when I first heard about it, there's no time limit on it. Mm -hmm. So you can um, you can go and, you know, I knew that all, all I had to do was to keep going. Um, you've not got those time pressures. And so I think it's very inclusive. It's like you were saying, you, you can walk it over a few days. or. Yeah. Um, Doing it in in one continuous loop is amazing. I um, suppose I mean, that's the thing with this, because the Bob Graham round that we keep on coming back to because it's the, the big Lake District long distance route. But there's that time pressure it is. that is not very um, comforting yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. or, or relaxing. Absolutely. And I guess if you take that away, you can enjoy the present moment and the experience. Yes. And where you are a bit yes. a bit more. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's, I think when I've sort of been around the Bob Graham before, you're sort of constantly looking at your watch, constantly worrying about, because you, you break it down, don't you? And, and each little bit becomes, you've got to get there, you know, it's broken down into like sometimes six or seven minute chunks or sure. 30 minute chunks. Yeah. This, as Josh said, really, you can you can look up, enjoy the route. Um, you don't, I guess if you haven't got around the, the Bob Graham in 24 hours, you kind of have a sense that you failed. Whereas this route, you you you, no such thing. you can achieve it absolutely. You can achieve it even if you've stopped down and had sleep in the middle. It's achievable um, and doable. So, and I think that's great. You know, as as a long distance walking route, yeah. Um, you know, because sometimes if people associate these things with running, um, they'll feel like you know they're not going to be able to do it, but you, you can walk it. Um, so, right. So, uh, tell us about your training uh, for the route. How long? Well, I'm sort of um, possibly a little bit like that, Joss, in that respect that I, I do I don't sort of do lots of lots of training because we don't really have time to do it. I just went out running a bit, um, and um, I do I do sort of a bit of. Um, I, I was thinking earlier when Joss was talking about sort of he didn't do a lot of running, but he worked the sheep and he had to yeah. catch sheep. That's a bit like the, the sort of modern nowadays. That's like interval training. Isn't it? Which yeah. is like actually really good chase. So, just, chase <laughs> so I didn't chase after I didn't chase after sheep. I do a bit of sort of very quick interval sort of Tabata type training okay. and just getting time on your feet really. Um, yeah. It's kind of wrecking bits of the route and yeah. And then it came to the day. Yes. How was all the planning for uh, for the event? Did that sort of go okay? Was it logistically complicated? Um, it was reasonably logistically complicated, like because um, I quite often do things like this. I sort of will quite often have a go at things solo, um, mm. and I I'm, I'm really grateful because Pete and Joss pers persuaded me to get a team sort of behind me, um, yeah. which was kind of which was great. I think sometimes it's hard if you're not totally sure that you're going to do something. Yeah, it can be quite difficult asking pacers to come out and support you. Um, 
But I was very grateful to Sabrina Vergy. I do some work for her and we had a chat about it beforehand. Okay. Um, she'd obviously had sort of all the attempts at her rain mates and the thing I admired most about that was she just kept going, she just kept trying. She was very tenacious. Oh yes. Yeah. But that's that's kind of yeah, that's that's what it's all about, I think. Yeah. And she said everybody kept coming out to support her. Um, and that I really took that kind of on board and I thought, yeah, you know, people people do want to the outdoors communities like that, aren't they? I mean yeah. they just they love coming out for an adventure and have the most amazing team of pacers. And honestly, um, because there was quite a few things that made the day very tough for me, and the pacers are what got me around. So get your friends involved if you're going to do it, you know, make it a social event. And it's that whole idea that it just becomes a day. Um, you know, obviously my experience was different to Joss's. I didn't feel like I was flying. <laughs> but um, it, it was a day, it was like a dream. The whole thing was just like a dream, the most perfect day, and just such a, a beautiful memory for me, really, for the rest that's, of my life. That's wonderful. Yeah. So less wonderful what what made it hard what what they said it didn't really go, go sure. to plan so about two weeks before the um the day i fell over just running on the scars in kendall um on a, on a flat surface just tripped over a little pebble and i banged the side of my left knee and i've actually got a bony lump there quite badly yeah. and it triggered off some itv issues and i was i was resting and doing i was meant to be running in wash the week before i rested i didn't do that and yeah. um was just hoping it was going to be okay and um Unfortunately, it wasn't. I got to Bleabury Tarn and... Um, how, far, was, how far is Bleabury Tarn? Four miles in. Okay. Like four miles in. Um, okay. And my knee started hurting. So, uh, and it was it really was... A, sort of, I mean, anybody yeah. runners um, will know that ITV pain is kind of like stabbing, kind of stabbing something in the side of your knee. It gave me some quite good material for the poem, actually. It was sort of quite sort of dark moments. Yes, and then, <laughs> <laughs> like stabbing in the, um, so, hang on, you... You started a 105 mile run and then four miles in were in quite excruciating pain yes. and then soldiered on for just another 101 miles. You, you just, I, I suppose you, it's what you do, isn't it? You just don't get to do something where Joss Naylor's <laughs> going to come and meet you, do you? I mean, you just don't get to do something like that going to come and meet you on the way around. And I knew Joss was kind of, Joss and Pete were coming at various points and a lot of my pacers were really inspirational people as well. And um, I just made a decision, Joss has a wonderful story about sheaving, sheaving of over a thousand sheep, I think, um, with a really bad back that was making him kind of, you know, like he described sort of shaking and kicking with sweat. And I was on top of um, like the first hill and I thought of that story from Joss and I was like, come on, let's just do this. Let's just see what your body can do and see if you can see it through the pain. And, yeah. and it's great you forget about that within about a day after. Or you just you just forget about all the pain. So you didn't, there wasn't any long-lasting effects. Um, yeah, I mean the, the knee's still a bit sore, um, but it, no, it wasn't actually any any worse really. So not that I want to encourage running on injuries or anything sure. like that, but I, it was the right decision for me at the end of the day. And actually, I think it was so hot. I think it ended up being better um, that we were walking um, than running. So right. um, it really was. It was the two hottest days of the year so far, um, and the blisters was the only other thing. Okay. Um, blisters. I think John Kelly had had to stop his wean rights a couple of days before that due to blisters, and um, I, I got the same blisters. It's something to do with the sweat and the, uh, the whole okay. front of my feet sort of sloughed off, which was painful. Um, uh, do we have any photos of that? Um, I think we do have some photos. Great. Of let's uh, so. let's let's get some photos uh, loaded up, and you can you Brilliant. can talk us through some of the some of these uh, these slides. Um, I mean, blisters are pretty excruciating. Are we ready? Yes. We're ready for some photos. Well, I'm afraid we're not there. We're not seeing photos on our end, but that's uh, <laughs> that's okay. Just you can tell us about some blisters, Barry. Yeah, well, and, uh, and, our, and our technical help will oh. give us some illustrations as we go. Our, uh, well, I think I think I need to to make mention here of Selwyn Wright. I think okay. he was one of many heroes of the day for me. Um, Selwyn, and I think you. I think Josh is reading Sel's book just now. Selwyn's I've another. just read it. You've Hi, just read I it. In fact, it. I was waiting for you to say Selwyn's was your favourite book, actually. Uh, <laughs> second favourite. Second favourite. Definitely the second favourite. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I think we're good. I think we've got some pictures. So We do have some pictures. Great. Yeah. Uh, a grand day out. Yes. Well, I thought that there was some slight time in that because it was a grand day out uh, for Joss. It was a grand two days out for me, really. Um, this is the photo of um, me looking adoringly at Joss at the end. Um, I, I can only describe it as that. 
my husband's comment was, um, if that wasn't Josh Naylor, I'd be very jealous. But as yeah. it's Josh, uh, John feels sort of the same as I do about, you, you, you get about Josh Naylor. I get a pass. And um, that was kind of the moment at the end when I finished. Um, and just honestly, just well, I was quite relieved actually to not be walking on my blisters anymore. But um, yeah, it was just part of what the whole, the whole day was about, really, just all the inspiration behind it and the history um, of what I just just done, kind of slowly chasing justice footsteps. So, very good. Very good. So got the next slide. Yeah. Thank you. That's me at the start. Um, so that's at Lowe's Water. We tried to sort of go exactly as exactly as we could to follow Joss's route. Um, but um, so I think we went for the same start point there um, about six in the morning. You could tell it was going to be hot there. Okay. We have the route here, but Joss, this is your map. So thank you to Cicerone for this. Um, Joss has talked us through it perfectly. Um, it's lovely to reel them off. I think you remember everything about the day, don't you, when you reel them off? I think you can see from the map, it just really does take you around the whole of the Lake District. Yes, yeah, a big sort of uh, U-shape on its side, to yeah. all, all the whole of the lakes. Yeah, well, I think the documentation you know, in the book, and especially what Dave Elliott's put together, it's something very special. It you know, if it you is. can't see it on the map, you can see it on the ground where he's described it, yeah. Yeah. which is absolutely magic. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, we got... That was just a little picture just to if you're going to do it in a continuous um, sort of route, you're going to you're going to be going through the night. And then um, funnily enough, we were just talking today about so some of the things you see, the wildlife that you see when you're out doing something like this. And I will just remember being galloped at by a herd of badgers in Kentmere. Um, badgers? I think badgers, yes. So quite angry badgers charging us in the morning along Kentmere. But it really was quite special. They came quite close before they kind of went off to the sun. I think one of my pacers kind of jumped behind me because of course I'm a vet so I should know how to wrestle with badgers. Of course, don't, you're trained <laughs> in that, aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, this was, I just wanted to mention about pacers we were seeing about how important they are. So um, there's a few legends in this picture. You'll see Sabs, uh, Sabrina, you'll see the back of Selwyn, right? Um, the lady on the left is my mum-in-law who's an absolute legend as oh, well right. and she came out and paced us and um, just what a beautiful memory to have Jenny. Jenny did the Joss Naylor challenge at age 70 didn't she Joss? They did her and so uh, Carol, Carol McNeil. Carol McNeil, yeah. And Carol McNeil had a pair of new knees in and she yeah. came down off middle fell there striding out with a pair of sticks and she had just done the, the crossing. Yeah. Amazing, know, this is your Joss Naylor challenge, oh, the, uh, right. the challenge for, how old do you have to be to have a go at the Joss Naylor challenge? You've got to be 50, 50. Uh, when you're 50 you get 12 miles. And how uh, far is it? 12, uh, it's uh, 48 mile okay. and there's uh, about 18,000 feet of ascent in it. But that sounds quite I uh, So, give your mother-in-law my congratulations, oh, which I've right. many a time, but I think she's yeah. only been running for a couple of years, yep. being known at that time of life. To do it in the allotted time was something very special. Yeah, that's uh, that's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. Keep take us through. Mary. Sure, this Keep was just going. that was Blavery Tarn where my knee first went. And um, this, I, I just called this slide "Mum Juggling" at Coniston. Okay. Um, so I was really sort of pleased. It made the day really special for me to take my kids around, so they came and met me at various spots. Lovely. And it was nice for them because I was away for quite a long time and I, I do work away as well, so it was quite important for them to come and see. Yeah. And they got to meet Joss, they got to meet a legend. And uh, this was just the, the route down to Hawswater, which is absolutely stunning, beautiful in the morning. Gorgeous. The only thing about Hawswater, if you do it in the heat, is that it evaporates or it, it kind of recedes. So I had to go like an extra half mile to get to Hawswater. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not joking to say I was very disappointed because <laughs> my feet were quite sore at that point and my knees sort of having come down the hill. Okay. So here we are at the end. Um, again, legends in that one and a, a special mention to uh, my friend Naomi, whose family gave me huge support. The kids were all there to meet us at the end. And I think Joss was, was sort of, you were sizing up Annie. You were sort of, we were thinking that, yeah, she was she was probably going to be an all right fell runner in that photo. I think that's what that's you read. <laughs> Um, this photo at the end um, was, was um, it is quite funny, really. Um, basically, I was thinking, 
I've come all this way to touch the water with Joss because the poem is called Touch the Water. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't actually bend down to actually touch the water. <laughs> was it? My legs were too sore. Joss was right when he said about this last road section. Oh, it yeah. was a real struggle. I, I thought it was there at Bass and Three. It was like, I've done it now. I'm there. Yeah. And it was only four miles on the road, but it just went on and on and on. Okay. And then my legs stiffened up and I couldn't bend down to. I think Joss might have helped me down. In a <laughs> I was like, it's like on you. And then there we go. That was just at the end. Just absolutely, you know, I still have to pinch myself. I can't quite believe that it happened. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a beautiful route. And um, as long as Joss is not in Spain, and I, I think it's okay to say this from, from him and Pete, you know, they, they make such an effort to come out and see people when they're doing routes and, yeah. you know, just, just to give people that gift of, and the inspiration of being there. To meet yeah. you, it was, um, yeah, you came and walked the last mile or so, didn't you? Well, it was rather special night, like, you know. It was lovely. Aye. Yeah. And I think what we saw from that, that last photo, Mary, touching, touching the water, is something, and there may be another kind of special thing about this route, is that it's sort of a, a kind, of, kind of a kinesthetic sort it of is, experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, and kind of, and it's like a symbolism, isn't there? There definitely between is, doing, yeah. doing that as well. Yeah. We definitely, I mean, that's what, for me, the poem really yeah. is about that sort of, that was my first thought. Um, so we're hoping, um, obviously we're making the film and it's looking sort of hopeful we're going to be at the film festival. Oh, uh, kind of um, Mountain Festival. It is, yes. Brilliant. And that's I do great. have to blame, I don't know um, how many will have heard of a, a chap called Jeff Cox, who's a wonderful poet, and he made a very well-known film called The Shepherd's Hand. Yeah. And Pete Todd Hunter had told me about the film and I'd watched it. Um, we were sort of coming up with the plan and I knew that I wanted to, to make this film, write the poem. And do the route. Yeah. Um, so it is. It's it's just a very. Um, it lends itself very well to sort of like to poetry. Yeah. And um, so yeah, we we sort of yeah that idea of us touching the water and getting well, it in the end. I think we're all really excited to see that film when uh, when when it's finally uh, finally ready and premiering at the Kendall Mountain Festival. Hopefully. And we'll um, we'll make sure that we give pointers to uh, to. to Cicerone followers about where to where to find it and um, uh, and all that sort of thing. Mari, thanks for that uh, that tour. Um, we're going to move on to some audience questions in just a moment, but before we've got a little giveaway. Um, so we've got uh, a few special bits of kit actually. What I've got right here are some um, uh, brand new pieces of Joss Naylor merchandise. So we've got an amazing uh, Joss Naylor T-shirt. Um, from the really exciting uh, company called Ascendancy uh, Apparel. They've got some really, really cool stuff. And uh, here's a, a hoodie um, right here, Joss Snaver. Um, and then the third uh, item in the giveaway is one of these books. So that's going to be signed with a personalized message from, uh, from the man himself. Uh, so the way to enter the giveaway is just drop us an email, send an email to live at cicerone.co.uk and we'll, you, we'll enter you into the draw and, um, and somebody's going to be a lucky winner of a t-shirt, a hoodie and, uh, uh, and a book. Right, cool. So, um, well, well, we I can see we've got some brilliant questions here, um, an immensely long list. So we're going to have to do our best to get through them as sharply as possible, uh, Joss um, and Mari. Right, okay. So first question. Um, let's have this one uh, question from Rick. Um, Rick says uh, he got into mountain trials uh, this weekend, but he wants to do lakes, mares, and waters. Uh, any tips? What do you think? Someone that's done some uh, done a mountain trial. Oh, well, I think it's just a man for it. If he's done a mountain trial, he's got a good few miles in his legs, it. and and try and get over the all course. You know, even if it's in three or four different sections, and uh, you know what's lying ahead. Yeah. And uh, get a decent day and a half or whatever, uh, how many days you plan to do it in. Yeah. And just go out and enjoy, enjoy it and take everything in. Because when you finish, you've got all the sweat and look back on what you've just done. You'll get all sorts of memories and memories of very, very beautiful places. That's great advice. Great, great advice. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Joss. Uh, right, let's uh, let's have this one. A question from Lizzie. Um, 
Josh, what do you take to eat uh, or drink when fell running? Lizzie says, I do not like modern energy gels and drinks and tend to take a jam sandwich, an oat bar or some dried fruit on, and water or cold tea. Do you have any suggestions? I think the most important thing is to have a, a good drink with you and you can get some glucose and half a teaspoonful of salt Okay. and put the salt in a little bottle and three good eight of teaspoonfuls of glucose, fill it up to the top of the water, give it a good shake up and if you're getting a bit weary have a mouthful of that, it'll keep the cramp away and the okay. sugar will give you energy and uh, if you want something to eat, you want to have one of those soft tea cakes and a bit of good salty egg mayonnaise. Right, so and we've got... Chop it up and it, it just slide down and the taste for a little bit of salt in it. I'll keep it going for a week. Brilliant. So um, egg mayo sarnies, uh, salted glucose mix and tea cakes. Oh, Brilliant. Yeah. That's uh, that's the stuff for you. You make a sandwich out of your tea cake. Like, you know, right, it's separate. Good. Right, okay. <laughs> so then, okay. Like, then right, lad. Okay. <laughs> uh, right, a uh, question from Simon. Um, I might take this, actually. Uh, for those of us not wanting to run the whole thing, does it break down into sensible stages? Uh, yeah, it does. In fact, the, the book breaks it down into sensible stages. Uh, I've now forgotten how many stages, but it generally works out to sort of a, a day's worth of walking. So if you're running, it would work quite well to do sort of double stages or um, uh, or something like that. But there's, there, well, the Lake District isn't the most amazing place for public transport. I think we can all sort of agree on that. There's uh, there's ways of being able to make it work. And of course, there are kind of... Um, um, hotels and B&Bs to stop off along the way. So I, I think it can probably break down quite quite well into stages. Um, right, the question from Peter. And we know, uh, Joss, that you had um, uh, a lot of pain, um, sort of uh, chronic pain uh, in your life. And how did you sort of manage to run through that, that kind of pain? Well, um, I think... I got I, when, when my back was knocked up, I was in the early years of life, and uh, I had that for 11 years. You know, you couldn't yeah. sleep for it. You got an hour's sleep at the floor to finish. It what you got, it didn't matter how you flung yourself. Yeah. You go to bed, you'd fall asleep, and within an hour, you'd wake up and say you're staying. Uh. Some nights I'd get up and walk off for a wonder, you know, trying to get rid of it. You couldn't. Yeah. And mm -hmm. your body just got used with it. Just got used to it. I but. Uh, you know, it just pulled you down. Gosh. Um, thanks, Joss. Um, I guess another another grit and getting used to it kind of thing. That's the answer. Um, Mari, one one for you. Uh, how many of the lakes, mares and waters have you swum? Well... Because um, you're bringing uh, to your swimming stuff as at well. At the moment, I've only done a couple. Okay. Um, but I have the, the challenge has inspired me. Um, to go and swim the length of all of them that I can. So I think there's, Kenya, there's a couple of the reservoir ones that you yeah. can't swim. So I did Coniston uh, last week. Okay, I did Coniston, which is amazing. And I'm hopefully going to have a open from here next week. So I'm trying to get a few of them done before winter, then the smaller ones done in winter, and then I've given myself six months. Oh, so you're going to go and do them all? I really want to go. Yeah, it's, oh, just, nice. it's just kind of part of the inspiration for the yeah. I think Joss will understand. I know you're not Joss, not swimmer, right? But it, it's, the, it's just. I'm not either. Just, <laughs> just going, you know, when you see the route and going around it and you get a view of a lot of the waters from when you start coming down from the high peaks and it just sort of seems like a, a good yeah. thing to do. So no, yes, sounds... I'm, only, I'm only just starting on that quest. So <laughs> oh, that, sounds, uh, that sounds really nice. Um, one for both of you guys, uh, Joss and Mari. Uh, this is a question from Rory. So thanks a lot, Rory. Uh, what's your favourite fell run for stopping to enjoy the view? Ah, now Maybe this is a controversial question for stopping to enjoy the view, but there's some some pretty amazing views out there that are worth stopping for. Hi, right, now there's some very picturesque places, and uh, I think you know when you don't end it, at the top of Green Gable. Green Gable. Green Gable. Yeah. There's a place going up on a Green Gable. When you look down, you pick Blackbeck Town up. Put them in a lake and come up water. Yeah. 
And I was just saying many times we should just move loads on the other side. Oh, yeah. And, just, just and line it up. Because when you see the sun reflecting on those three, it's not right. very, very special. And there's just one place there. It's just below the gap there when you go to on, on the ground that's in Green Gable. It's just above the, the last style on that fence. Okay. And about 20, 20 metres away from the wire. And it's just the most picturesque place on this earth. Between Brandreth and Green Gable, 20 metres over the fence. I. Uh, yeah. On the, if you're running around uh, Ennerdale. It's, it's so on that, the Gable side of the fence. Gable side. Uh, Very uh, nice. Mari, what's your top spot for, uh, for stopping to enjoy the view on a run? Um, it's not, it's not, it's because it's not somewhere I go a lot, but my, my top new favourite spot is actually from the Lake Smooths and Waters. And it's going up from Ennerdale. Um, where you go up to sort of over into Wasdale, somewhere that I've just not walked before, and it just reminds me of Scotland. And they have like beautiful, they have sort of um, cotton, huge fists of cotton, and all the heather, and and um, yeah. I want to go back. It's absolutely stunning. It's a sort of secret small part of the Lake District that's not really. So yeah, just going up from Ennerdale Valley, going over into Wasdale near Haycock. Okay. It's just yeah, stunning. That sounds like a, a a beautiful spot. There's a there's a really interesting question that we've got from from Richard uh, actually that I think we'd quite like to yeah to ask uh, ask you both. Um, I just need to locate it now. But Richard's asking about why you would choose to run rather than walk, um, and isn't it a sort of a bit more dangerous and you don't get a chance to sort of see the view um, uh, as well or enjoy it? But yeah. Well, what, why do we run rather than walk? Well, yeah, I think, you know, you can run the bits where there's nothing to look at. Yeah. And uh, when you come to the more picturesque places, you can just trot along and take everything in. Yeah. I know most of my rooms, there were training, you know, long training rooms. If I ever had a time during the winter, yeah. I told before I had to go to Spain for winters, I used to do some tremendous long runs, you know, and I got more pleasure out of running the yeah. And, uh, you know, whatever I went, if it was one of those days, I would take all the good views in and mm. uh, relish them. Yeah. There was something very magic. I think that's true. You don't automatically stop enjoying the view. No, no. Do you? Yeah. They don't, no. don't shut something out that's good to see. Can no, you? It's no. something very special. No. Right, thanks, uh, thanks both of you guys very much uh, for that. I'd just like to finish the evening with a... Um, uh, Getting a uh, one of our friends at uh, the Braith Aid Trust over. So um, Scott, if we can bring you over here, uh, I'd just like to just um, thank you very much for um, for, for hosting us uh, hosting us here uh, at Braith Aid. Um, uh, over the course of this year, Cicerone's um, uh, donating um, donating money to uh, the Braith Aid Trust. So we're matching. Um, um, uh, or customers, um, people who bought books through the Cicerone website, uh, we're matching what um, customers are be being able to donate there. Um, and uh, uh, and additionally, um, there's something like 16%, I think it works out to, of um, uh, the royalties from uh, from this book are going straight to, to the Braith Aid Trust as well. So just sort of to kick start off our year of um, donations to the Braith Aid Trust, just wanted to give uh, Scott a uh, a check for five thousand pounds. So well, there we are. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks a lot, and, and thanks to everybody who's made a contribution uh, to this. We appreciate every donation that comes in to support our work with children and young people. Um, so thanks to Cicerone for, for making this happen, but especially to everybody who's donated. It's really, really appreciated. And thanks, thanks for hopefully and, plenty more to plenty more yeah, to yeah, yeah, and thanks also to, to Joss and Mary for this fantastic oh. evening. Uh, so. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you. Right, well, uh, I think that's um, uh, that's about all we've got time for. Um, so, um, yeah, the main thing to say is uh, is a thank you to all, all you guys for uh, for joining us uh, tonight, um, and uh, and thanks for all the wonderful questions. And then Joss and Mari, thank you so much for sharing your stories, sharing us some photos, um, and just I guess explaining um, a bit more about this route and about your love for the Lake District because I think we we really pick up that 
that love for the Lake District, um, which is very, very, very strong. So um, yes, again, thanks for all the questions. Uh, the recording of this podcast is going to be available on the Cicerone Facebook page, YouTube, and on the Cicerone website. So you can send it to anyone who might have missed the event tonight. Uh, remember to visit the Cicerone website if you'd like a copy of the guidebooks. Um, hopefully we'll see you at our next Cicerone live event uh, or out on the trails. And Thanks, guys. And thank Thanks. you for uh, all you've done for Brady and the support you've given us in putting this build together. Thanks um, a lot, Josh. It go forever. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks.